Hello guys, welcome to this very brief update of uh, where we are with the car just before I go to the dyno day. By the time you see this video, we'll have probably had the dyno day, hopefully everything's went well. So yeah, I'll give you a little bit of update, uh, let you know exactly how uh, we found the problem, the running problem, which is now resolved. It might just help some of you who have got OMX CCUs in the future. That's really my main reason for doing this because it's had my head in the shed, I'll be honest. Finding this, uh, getting to the bottom of this problem has been a real, real fight. And also I'd like to show you something that I've just had done. You'll probably already seen a little picture of it in the thumbnail. So right, right where we were was we had uh, a dyno day, as you know, where it didn't go very well. Basically, it was losing power at 4,000 RPM. There was no power above 4,000 RPM. So we come on after that, after a bit of a discussion I mentioned in another video, we found that I hadn't quite set the cam timing up properly because it's a VVT and it has to be done slightly differently to your generic timing, you know, of a, of a standard car. So we altered that. It was only, um, I would say, a maximum of a degree out. And that then allowed the VVT graph to follow as it should. So that did resolve part of the issue, but it didn't resolve the running of the car. It still had a massive flat spot in the middle of the rev range, which was absolutely awful. It made it really, really sluggish, uh, just bogged down in the middle. It would pick its ass up low end, and it felt like it would pick its ass up high end, but in the middle, nothing, just flat. So basically, long long nights lying in bed trying to oh well overthinking it that's me i'm an overthinker trying to get to the bottom of what the issue is because i normally always get to the bottom of issues by lots of thought late at night when there's no one disturbing you uh, and basically i came up with an idea why don't we uh have a look at the vvt graph because i'll show i'll put a picture up of the graph now the vvt graph this is my vvt graph and i shall see Around about on the bottom is RPM and up the left hand side column is your degrees of advancement. Now, if you can see at the rev range I'm talking about, which is the middle of the rev range, all the way through it's a straight line, it's a straight line right through the center. And that's only at around about 20 degrees of advancement. Now, a friend sent me his VVT graph uh, just for comparison and his was more 30s and 40s at that kind of range. So I thought, maybe we just don't have enough degrees of advancement at that rev range. So me and Anthony went out in the car again, went up and down a bypass, so you can basically go from roundabout to roundabout, nice straight roads. And we tried playing with that graph. We tried moving that 20 up to 30. I think we even took it up to 35 as well. So we moved that straight line that you can see through the middle up to 30 and 35. And I'll be honest, never really made much difference. Uh, before that, we'd also tried going out for a drive with um, a wide band, but it was actually a narrow band gauge connected, uh, and altering the fuel of that uh, in that area, and that made no difference either. So today we've been doing a bit of a uh, remapping. There's the temporary budge of the uh, air fuel ratio gauge that we've jammed in the dash. And he's driving because obviously I've been doing the mapping. Oh <laughs> and he's just jumped in, obviously, and he's been doing the mapping. I've been doing the driving. So we were, I was really worried as to exactly what it was because I didn't want another failed dyno day. So I couldn't let it lie. I had to keep trying different things. Hence the reason why we then tried the VVT graph, which didn't work. We altered that to various different degrees and it was still flat on its ass in the middle of the rev range. So at this point, I'm kind of running out of ideas. So we just decided, let's just go for a bit of a drive before we go home. It's going to have to be another rethink. So I was just driving along and I said to my mate, I've got an idea. After Dino Day last time, I think I showed you, a picture, you guys a picture of this in a previous video. Anthony, my mate, found a, a little graph, which I'll put a picture up of now. And basically what that shows is that the... Um, Cam one or the inlet cam timing is set at high gain um, below below four thousand RPM and low gain above three thousand nine hundred RPM. So we kind of thought, well, maybe then figures just need increased. So I said, as I'm driving along, I've got an idea. Why don't we try increasing the figures 
from 4,000 to maybe 6,000, 3,900 to 5,900, because you've always got to leave, apparently you've always got to leave 100 RPM between them two set points. So we pulled in at a lay by, my mate changed 4,000 to 6,000, and 3,900 to 5,900. And I'm not joking, we set off out of that junction, my mate looked at me, I looked at him, and we just went, fucking hell, what a difference. It just came to life. It was almost like having a sport mode setting on a modern car. It went from being flat on its face to screaming right through the rev range. And I actually hit that 5,900 and I felt it go flat again. So now I know I need to just take that up a little bit further. But that's very easily done on dyno dates. Just to set a number in a box and enter. So basically, guys, that's exactly what the problem was. If you've got an Omex 710 series ECU and you're finding that it's flat, it's maybe just that setting and that's all it was in this case and obviously a little bit of that combined with the cam time and being a degree or so out and then two things have really really transformed the car it now drives how i originally expected it's got a lot of up and go it feels great it screams and i've got so so much confidence now going into the next dyno day i've got so much more confidence that it's gonna perform on the day do what it's supposed to and not have any issues whereas last time I think because I hadn't drove it on the road, I had all sorts of things go around in my head and I wasn't sure that it was going to go well. And well, obviously, use your intuition, I suppose. Use your intuition. And I was right, it didn't go great. But anyways, I'm a bit more confident this time. I'm actually looking forward to it a little bit more this time. Um, we're going for Dino Day this Saturday. Uh, but obviously, you probably won't see this video till the Sunday. But fingers crossed, it all goes well. And I'll hopefully get a video out to you very, very soon showing you the updates of that dyno day. Before I go guys, I just want to show you something I've just had done. So, for a long time, a very long time, while building the Escort, I've had this idea in mind that I would love to get a photograph of both cars, both the Escort and the Mini, at Ribblehead Viaduct. Now the problem there is Ribblehead Viaduct is a couple of hours away from us. It's at least uh, it's at least probably two hours I would say, um, and it's getting both cars there. It's having a driver for both cars. It's getting uh, a decent spot to park and and having somebody there that knows how to use a camera because that's not me. I'm not a, I'm not great with a camera. So I had an idea that wouldn't it be smart? Wouldn't it really be really cool to get it drawn? As you can see here but i had absolutely no idea how to go about that i don't know any artists i wouldn't know how to go about it then john McAllister, you may know from youtube um old school motors he had a drone uh, done um, and it came out absolutely amazing by a guy called chris tompkins uh, and as you can see chris has done an absolute outstanding job of this and I thought, well, the one that John had done was amazing, immaculate detail. I thought, fantastic. I've, I now know someone who can bring my dream to reality, my you know my uh, my art to reality. So yeah, I sent uh, I sent Chris some pictures of the cars and the backdrop. Uh, you can just see the steam train there in the background, which is something else you wouldn't get with a photograph either. Finding a time where that steam train would go by would be probably pretty uh, pretty slim. So I sent him some pictures of the backdrop with the steam train. I sent him some angles of both cars and, he, and Chris absolutely loved the idea of um, of putting this together. And he did me a great deal, uh, absolutely fantastic deal. When I think of the hours that Chris put into this, Chris says this took him about 48 hours, uh, around about two days, obviously. And I can understand that because the detail in it is immense. And he really, really has brought it to life. It's amazing, I love it. Uh, the wife liked it that much. She's even allowed me to put it up on the dining room wall. So, yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits of that. I really am. He's done a fantastic job. So if it's something you guys are looking to have done similar, it's Chris Tompkins, but his uh, Facebook page is Boosted Artworks. Uh, you'll find that on Facebook. Uh, you'll see a load of, loads of his uh, previous pictures and drawings up there. Um, so, yeah, drop Chris a line if it's something you'd like to... Uh, to get done and what i will do is i'll uh, i'll leave a link in the description to uh to chris's youtube uh sorry chris's facebook page so any of you guys can uh, can use uh his services if you'd like so yeah i'm absolutely chuffed to bits with that i really am that looks absolutely fantastic on our dining room wall 
so yeah that's it guys that's basically just a little update i was talking about uh like i say i'm going on the next dino day in the next couple of days and um, i'm really really looking forward to getting everything right and then start using the car properly so guys i'll see you very very shortly with an update on the dino day well guys i've just got back around about an hour ago from dino day number two as you know i've just as i've just mentioned you'll get to see all about that in the next video brings a little idea as to how it went